Hey guys, this is Dustin. Uh, today we are going to look at what I'm going to call today the contrarian uh, process in the NBA. Uh, we're primarily going to look at the way three-pointers are being used in basketball, and we're going to look at a couple teams that fall into a contrarian uh, method. Uh, normally I would build the whole process for you guys, but today it, there was a lot of work that went into building this and a lot of playing. Uh, so I went ahead and I set up the sheet as you're seeing it now. Uh, real quick, I took the 2016 basketball reference data uh, for totals for each individual NBA player. I uh, brought in the 15 for some others for testing. I didn't actually use that. Uh, here you see I brought over the team. Uh, I did a concatenation real quick just so I had that. So originally, if you actually look here, I got hidden of the 2015 teams. I just didn't find that the final data was useful for us here. We've got field goal field goals made, which uh, basketball reference just refers to as field goal, or FG. I field goal attempts, again, FGA, this is total attempts. Uh, three pointers made, three pointers attempted. And I calculated a couple of interesting fields here. And these, let me just remove this here, guys. I don't really need this uh, conditional formatting, clear rules, clear time sheet, there we go. Alright, so column H is field goal um, percentage. Uh, this is hard coded here. I don't know why I did that. <coughs> but basically, it's going to be your field goals, three pointers divided by field goal attempts. As you see, I use some ifs, as I've mentioned before, the, my personal favorite way of bringing data over. And we calculated this. So we have right here, we have the three point field goal percentage of teams. And then a little more complicated, we have the percentage of field goals that are three pointers. Uh, so what we basically wanted to do here is we want to look at this total field goal attempts number and relative to the total field goal attempts that are threes. Uh, the idea being that there should be an increase, that there's been an increase in total three pointers attempted in the league. I wanted however to scale this down. I didn't want to look at, for example, uh, the San Antonio Spurs which are going to be uh, one of our contrarian teams here. Uh, the Spurs, they play at a fairly slow pace in the current league so they have their total number of field goal attempts, or total number of turnovers, or total number of everything pretty much is uh, slightly lower than say uh, Golden State which plays at a faster pace. So this reduces the pace factor and purely looks at how many attempts are you making in a game? What are you attempting to do? Uh, the next thing I went and created and I brought over um, historical totals. Uh, this is all uh, NBA data totals from, two from 2015 all the way back to 1947. I didn't feel we needed to go that far back, guys. Uh, so I looked at uh, 1990 forward, uh, just to give us a good idea of what's happening here. And this is field goal percentage. And just eyeballing this here, you can kind of see that there was slightly lower field goal percentage. Uh, oh, 90 through 92, I guess. Uh, after that, though, we pretty much see a flat line. Um, 33 to 30... This looks like the max here. Uh, so 35.88. Um, again, fairly flat, and we'll look at a graph of this. And then I looked at the field goal percentage, or uh, percentage of field goals that were threes. Uh, this is a very strong growth pattern. Very, very strong growth pattern. And then I also brought in 2016 up here. In fact, let's just bring that down and stick it right there. There we go. Uh, so right now, 2016, teams are shooting. Uh, 35.06, not quite as good as 2014, uh, not as good as 2013, uh, but they are taking more three-pointers than ever. Uh, this is the all-time high, and just to verify that, we're going to just quickly throw in max. All right, uh, Max gives us the largest value in the series, and there we go. And we see that the best was 36.67, which is right here which is 1996, and we'll talk about what that tells us, too, uh, here in a second. Um, if you guys are NBA fans or uh, follow the game pretty closely, uh, you're probably aware that in the 90s there was a shorter three-point line, and we would expect to see some bias as a result of that. Okay, the graphs. Let's start here. So this is our three-point um, relative to the field goal uh, attempts. Uh, as you do see that we did have a spike starting in 95 and we saw it in 96 and 97 and we saw it fall back down uh, in 98 uh, otherwise we have a fairly smooth curve here showing that there's an increase a little spike here and this spike as you guys also see 
does coincide with a field goal percentage increase, albeit pretty minimal if you look at the way this uh, graph looks. It's pretty close to flat. Uh, really, if you start with 98, I mean, that's that's flat. Okay. So what we do understand, though, from this graph and this information, again, they don't have uh, 2016 in this graph, uh, but that is uh, that there is a, an increasing... In fact, actually, let's, let's just do that. Let's change that real quick. Edit our data set. All right. And all we're going to do is add it to 32. And then edit 32. Okay. And hit OK. And select data once again. Edit this. 30 to here and we're actually going to go here and edit again okay and we're missing something here guys let me know Let's go back here. Oh. So as you can see here, I've got hidden values. Another reason not to do these things, guys. All right, there we go. And now our graph updates. Got it. Perfect. Beautiful. All right, so we've got a very simple uh, process here. We now just can see that there has been starting with... Uh, so in the 2012 season, we were pretty much following our trend. And then 2013, teams realized, hey, three-pointers, these seem like valuable tools. Uh, and we've seen an increase every single year. And we're again seeing 2016. It is continuing with that increasing process. Okay, so what I did here, and let me go back in here and select data. I only want to look at the 2016 or 2015 for now. Okay, so 2016 data, I have graphed the average three-point field goal percentage in the green. So any team to the right of this green line here, and let me just make this bigger for us, all right. So any team to the right of the green line is a, an above average NBA three-point shooting percentage team. Uh, all right, then I have a dark red line, which is probably not showing up very well here. And that is indicating that you shoot more three-pointers as a percentage of field goal attempts than other teams. I've seen some other work uh, on some of the ESPN sites, um, Nate Silver's uh, site, I cannot think of the name of it right now, uh, where they've looked at total three-point attempts and total three-point makes, and they've kind of graphed sort of the teams that do well tend to be in that high uh, attempt. I wanted to reduce the concept of pace, and I wanted to focus more on just how your team makes up the offense, and that's why I selected this. A few things of note here. We do see a couple of clear, obvious, uh, interesting teams. The Golden State Warriors have a three-point field goal percentage that's just off the charts. We could probably argue that a team shooting over 43% from three uh, should look for ways to shoot more of them. Meanwhile, Daryl Morey, who's kind of historically known for being the... Uh, the analytics guy and a big proponent of three-point shooting. His team is leading the league in three-point attempts. However, we see they are below the average team in shooting. Uh, is this something that's going to you know, correct itself down the road? I don't know. Um, we'll have to kind of wait and see on that one, guys. Uh, but what it does indicate, though, is that they are taking a lot of three-pointers. And mind you, they're very close to the average team. They're also not particularly for performing well this year. They did very well last year. They're not quite there this year. Again, I'm wondering if this line is going to slowly start moving in this direction here. I somewhat doubt it's going to move up or down much. I think we're probably going to see a right shift, as I think that they're a better three-point shooting team than we'd expect. Anyway, these are kind of your leaders in the change. Uh, interesting, we got uh, Charlotte here. Uh, Cleveland is high. On three-point attempts, Dallas with Rick Carlisle. Uh, Portland, a team that was very successful last year, they're high on the list. No shocker there, Atlanta won 60 games last year. They're high on the list. Speaking of our analytics guys, uh, we have Sam Hinkie's team, the Philadelphia 76ers. They are also high on this list. 
uh, Boston. And really, if you look at it from a management perspective, these are teams that all have embraced analytics. They're all doing pretty well. Uh, and then you sort of fall down here in this next tier, and I would say at this point, once you're falling uh, under what looks to be, uh, I don't know, 29 and a half, 30 range, that's where you're sort of falling into basketball teams just kind of doing whatever makes sense for them. And I think you get that all the way down, even through here. Uh, I am a little surprised Oklahoma City is so low in three-point field goal attempts. I think that's in part because, well, Westbrook's not a three-point shooter, and he is a very high usage and high volume player. Um, you also look at teams like Phoenix here. That looks like a team that should probably shoot some more threes. Uh, they're shooting just under 38%, uh, as you see here. And obviously, they're doing well. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking at the teams that are contrarians. And that's the sub-23 group here. And just back to our uh, trend line up above, or below, sorry. 23% uh, has been the average, roughly, give or take, around 2009 is when teams said, hey, more than, we need to get to almost 20% of our shots. Maybe even 25% of our shots should be from three. Uh, that's a pretty big uh, line of demarcation. 2010, we didn't see a real move. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, anyway, the modern league, the, the current trend, 23, is a pretty good indicator. Uh, that's where you should probably be. So now we have five teams here. And this is kind of where I think the purpose of the video is to really illustrate this. Memphis, I think, is well known. Now, they did bring in a GM who is an analytics guy. He's taken a very uh, different approach in building his team, in large part because he came into a team with Marc Gasol and Zach Randolph, two of our kind of the best one-two big man combo we've seen in the league in quite some time. They've done really well, but they've got Mike Conley. They, they had Tayshaun Prince for a while. They have Tony Allen on that team. They're not a three-point shooting team. And they're sort of the poster boy for the contrarian movement. They are big, they're strong, they're slow, and they don't shoot threes. Uh, Brooklyn, I don't even want to talk about them. I find them boring to talk about, but they're not a very good basketball team. Uh, not even worth really discussing. Minnesota's interesting. Uh, so we're talking about a team with a lot of young, super, super high potential talent. Carl Anthony Towns, the first pick last year in the draft, looks like an all-star this year. They brought in a phenomenal player in Wiggins uh, in the Kevin Love trade. They're also playing Ricky Rubio, who has been a really interesting player. He's one of those analytics uh, darlings. Can't shoot from anywhere. But when he's on the court, that is a better team. Substantially better team. Plays great defense. Very interesting team. But, you know, again, this is a team shooting really low. I mean, they're shooting 33% from three. They're not a good three-point shooting team. And no player I just mentioned in that group is really a good three-point shooter. They have the lowest three-point attempts in the league. So the question pairs, is this a good decision, bad decision, and or is it just a decision that we don't make a judgment? I'd say this group right here are all making the right decision. They're not shooting too many threes because they aren't good at it. And now we have our two other contrarians. And... The San Antonio Spurs here are just an absolute mass of outlier. They've made, been to the finals twice in the last three years. They made the Western Conference Finals the year prior to that. They've been a very successful team, and they've been a very high three-point shooting team. And yet the San Antonio Spurs are one of the lowest three-point shooting attempt teams in the league this year after the acquisition of David Aldridge. An interesting uh, decision that they're making but what's more interesting, though, is, yes, Kawhi Leonard, David Aldridge are, are both very good shooters in the mid-range. Uh, kind of the lost art of basketball, if you will. They still have, though, some great three-point shooters on that team. Uh, one thing we are waiting to see is if Danny Green can ever find his shot again and start moving them in that direction. Uh, perhaps if he starts shooting threes better, perhaps we see a vertical move here. Uh, but they've got a long way to go to even catch a Chicago. Uh, Chicago's sitting there at 25%. They're sitting at 
23, and if I brought this decimal place out a little bit more, you'd say they're just under. And then we also have Milwaukee, a team that is shooting, again, well above average. Uh, not uh, not like the Spurs are, but they are. Just, let me look at this again, guys. The Spurs are the third best three-point shooting team in the league uh, by percentage. So when they shoot them, they're deadly accurate. They're just not shooting them. Milwaukee falls more, line, more or less in line with sort of the cluster uh, of the, I would say, the upper quarter of the league. Uh, just look at the graph. So they can shoot the three. Why don't they? Um, and I'll be honest, I've not watched a lot of Milwaukee Bucks basketball this year, so I'm legitimately asking, why do the Bucks not shoot more threes? Is it Jason Kidd? Is it... Is it Michael Carter Williams being a bad shooter and he's got way too high a usage? I don't know, guys. But anyway, this has been your NBA Excel discussion for the day. Uh, if you have any thoughts, let me know. Any opinions, let me know. And if you hate me, uh, please post comments below. That's what they're for. Uh, and as always, hit that dislike button. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.